Good morning, guys. Thank you for joining me. I hope everyone has an enjoyable weekend. Here's a current view of Old Faithful on the live webcam there at Yellowstone National Park. They got a lot of cobwebs <laughs> on the camera. Yeah, the webcam has webs. Uh, one of you guys, you know who you are, made the comment about that the last time I made a video about Yellowstone. Yeah, their um, poor camera. They changed it. It used to be Yellowstone Forever that provided the uh, camera and its maintenance, I suppose. Um, but there was a problem with the money. And I don't know. It doesn't have Yellowstone Forever. It just says, volunteers. This webcam provides a stream view of old people. Yeah, thanking the volunteers. Well, this new camera is just nothing but, um, yeah, very bad. It's the weekend, so the University of Utah is gone home. So any earthquakes, unless it's automatically generated by the computer, won't be reported. Heaven help us if uh, it decides it wants to start an eruption on the weekend because no one's going to be monitoring what's going on. At about 6.10 a.m. today, there was this small earthquake there at the park. On the left here, I have Little West Thumb. In the middle is the promontory, and over here on the right is a monitor. It's a borehole. It's a very deep well under the ground um, there by the fishing bridge for Yellowstone Lake. Here is an example of a borehole. It's a very deep well dug into the ground. This is uh, borehole 944. It's at Grant over there by Little West Thumb. And you can see it's a deep well dug into the ground. And this one is 500 feet deep, the strain meter. And the other monitors are about 394 uh, to 373 feet deep. It has a cap of cement over the top. That way nothing falls in and it doesn't pick up any outside noise. I talked about how Little West Thumb's been acting up, been screaming as the magma comes into the system. It's been flowing from west to east, which would be the promontory. And yeah, can you see what's been going on here with the promontory? Yeah, a lot of shaking going on there. And the ground has been breathing going up and down. Over here is, um, again, Yellowstone Lake, the borehole. So using Google Earth, here's the monitor for Grant. That would be down over here. This is West Thumb. And then over here, let me bring this down. Let me bring it out a little bit. This here is the promontory. And that has started screaming too. Up over here at the top of the lake is where the uh, borehole for Yellowstone Lake is at by the fishing bridge. Here on the stream view, the bottom one is the borehole for Yellowstone Lake. The middle is the promontory. Right there is where it was coming in so loud that it wouldn't pick up. And then we got some unusual activity right here. And at the top is Little West Thumb. And I'll go back another couple hours and here's the noise that was coming in at Little West Thumb. See that at the two o'clock line? The middle again is the promontory and this is Yellowstone Lake. So now we have two areas, Little West Thumb and the promontory that have showing that are showing signs of magma coming in fast and loud at times, not all the time, at the uh, caldera there at Yellowstone. So 610, this is the most recent larger of the earthquake. 610 a.m. We got this earthquake right here. And yeah, you can see the uh, hot gases that came up. Let me go here and show you this one. And if you look at the bottom, the first line at the bottom, it says MD magnitude 2.36. We got lots of other ones marked in red. Yeah, there's another time right there where it went extremely quiet. This is the other one that I showed you 
a minute ago there on the uh, stream view and making the image larger it looks like it's a mixture of volcanic and harmonic tremors here at the promontory it came in as a magnitude 2.14 and there's its signature let's make that larger this one too looks like to be volcanic and um, harmonic tremors yeah you can see how the uh, monitor is no longer sitting something's been knocking it up and down more likely the earthquakes here at the borehole for yellowstone lake it came in as a magnitude 2.34 i'll bring it down for you all right there you go md 2.34 the next earthquake marked in red there at the borehole for Yellowstone Lake is uh, almost 7.06. So that would be about 2.06 a.m. Um, came in a little bit later if it's the same one here at Little West Thumb. And this is the promontory. There's its signature on the spectrogram. Yeah, larger there at the borehole for Yellowstone Lake. You can tell the signature is smaller. We got a small P wave on it and it came in as a magnitude 1.88 and we'll make its signature bigger. Yeah, it looks like volcanic tremors. Hard to tell. There's so much marked in red for the um, promontory. Here's one of the signatures where it started coming in so loud that the machine just couldn't pick it up. See how it stopped working? Here's another signature of activity at uh, 2.34 Universal Time. Yeah, you can see the hot pockets of melt up here. Let's take a look at the signature. Yeah, look at that. I'm just going to kind of jump around because it's really hard to see. Yeah, we got more there. Hard to see what was going on and what line it's on because the monitor is um, really off tilt here. You can see all these small microquakes. So here we have a signature here of another quake, several quakes. And we got another one here. Oops, let me get the right line. There we go. Those of you guys that follow me uh, when I was doing one of my last reports about Hawaii and the eruption that's currently going on by the uh, East Rift Zone should recognize this signature. Yeah, it's often seen prior to uh, dike intrusion of magma. And many of you know that there is a crack under the lake there at the promontory. It's got a rye-like cap, and it's been trying to come up, push its way up to have another dike intrusion there at Yellowstone Lake. So there's that one marked in red. And I'm going to try and get this. This one, too, is marked in red. Let's take a look at its signature. Yeah, harmonic tremors, magma on the move. Going forward a little bit, yeah, same signature. Let's look at that one. That one's larger. Yep, volcanic tremors. I'm going to try and follow this line here. All right, moving further back in time. Let's look at the signature. Yeah, boom, 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 boom. Um, right there is a magnitude 0 0.70. This one here is a magnitude 0 0.91. 
Yeah, these are all microquakes. I'll pull it down so you can see it. Right there, see that? MD 0 0.91. All right, going back to when I pulled these files, we got a signature here. Let me see if I can find it. Might be right there. And there is one marked in red. Right there, it looks like. Yeah, look at the heat that came up. We'll look at the signature. See how it dips down? That's an indication that the first wave of the earthquake came from the south. And we'll look at the, uh, go back to that. And let's try and measure how big it was. All right, it says a 2.20. Let me pull this down so you can see it. See that? 2.20. Right, the signature looks larger here at Little West Thumb. Um, this one here is the promontory, which I just showed you. And this is the bore, borehole for Yellowstone Lake. Let's take a look at this one. Here at Little West Thumb, it comes in as a magnitude 2.23. Yeah, see that? Let's go down to these other ones, see if I can find... Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, huh? Yep. All right, let's look at the signature. Again, this is Little West Thumb. And that comes in as a 2.19. Let me bring it down. 2.19. And we got some more in red. Looks like right there, maybe. Let's see. Where is it at? Right, I found it. Yeah, these lines are all goofed up here. Okay, 21.23. And 21.23 and 25 seconds. So that would be yesterday at about 4.23 p.m. Let's look at the signatures. And that would be a magnitude, are you ready? Let me pull it down. A magnitude 3.36, not reported. And now that's put together. There's actually, looks like two signatures, bam, bam. They happen right, right away. Let me divide it up, see what we get. All right, so the first one, if I divide it up, is a 1.66. And then this one here would be a 2.30. Can you see that? Not being reported. All right, so I want to see, okay, um, from 1 to 10 hertz. I'm going to make that one bigger. Yeah, volcanic tremors. And I'm going to go back and look at the other one. I want to make that one bigger too. And I guess I'm going to have to just do the whole thing. All right, let's take a look at these other ones marked in red. Oops. I can get them. All right, these right here. Remember, this is the promontory. And this is where the crack... I can find it. Oops. Where the dike intrusion is trying to come up. I can stay on this line. Yeah, that's very significant. And we'll try and come over a little bit farther. You got another small one there. And then there's some smaller ones. Yeah, see, it doesn't even show. Yeah. Oh, let me go over here, this one. 
Okay. Yep. You know, if Yellowstone ever decides to have a major eruption within our lifetime, everything within 500 miles would be vaporized. Yeah, no chance of escaping. It would put our world into a uh, global cooling effect. Is that where it's at there? There we go. The waters would be polluted from the ash. Wouldn't be drinkable. Um, you couldn't go outside because of the ash. Nothing would grow um, because of the ash and also because of the global cooling. All right. 2.30 here at Little West Thumb, the Promontory, and at the Borehole for Yellowstone Lake. You know, I was thinking, they're requiring that people have reservations, supposedly, so they don't have crowding there at um, different parks. And I was thinking, well, that'd be a good way to keep track of who's at the park when an eruption happens, um, <laughs> who's no longer around, who's going to be vaporized. Um, if it's a small eruption, who and where they're going to be to um, get them out. So this would be the activity at 9, 12 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So let's take a quick look at the tilt meters. This is for Yellowstone Lake. This is the borehole. And as you know, the lake is tipping. This is for the last seven days. And they're measuring which direction the magma is flowing under the ground. That's what this X and Y is for. X is north, Y is east. And then going to the last 30 days. Yeah, look how it took a breath. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah, see that? Yeah. All right. Madison River for the last seven days. Yeah, going east. Remember, each dot would be an earthquake that affected the tilt of the uh, monitor. And this is the last 30 days. And then going to the Norris Geyser Basin. Yeah, there it took a breath for the last seven days. Now here it's spreading out going north, it looks like. And then the last 30 days. Yeah, look how it's just jumping all around there. And another monitor, this is Borehole 950 for the Norris Geyser Basin. Traveling north, spreading out. Last 30 days. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is okay. Nothing to see. Move along. You know, there's been so many magnitude 2 or greater earthquakes. And a lot of them, they are no longer reporting. And they said that when they started to have magnitude 2 or greater earthquakes, it would be cause for alarm for the geologists there. And they're not there this weekend. They're home. They're barbecuing, watching whatever on TV, collecting their paycheck. Yeah, you really think they care about us? So what are your thoughts? Are you prepared for the next disaster? Will it be an earthquake, a volcanic eruption, um, fire, tornadoes? Are you prepared? This younger generation is so used to being taken care of. Um, no, they're thinking that either mommy or daddy or grandma or grandpa or mommy government is going to save their butts. They're going to have a cold shock of reality one day. So what are your thoughts? Please put your comments to my, down below. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, please put a comment, even if it's just to say hello, because YouTube is unsubscribing people, thinking you're bots. Many of you have done that. And if you wish, I'm also on Twitter. You can follow me on there. Uh, please stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.